The incision for the maxillary canine extraction in the cat starts back at that third premolar, uh, comes rostral, and then um, we'll do a vertical releasing incision, as you see there, in front of any bone expansion in the diastema between the incisor and the canine tooth. We want to make sure we get mesial to that bone expansion so that it's easy to remove that, keeping our burr away from the flap on the mesial aspect of the mucosa. So now we're using a small end of a periosteal elevator. That's an EX9 periosteal elevator specifically for feline. And we're just working that underneath in that rocking motion right there, trying to release that attached gingiva, trying to be real careful not to tear that gingiva at that level. And any attachment right there, caudal to that canine and around that, uh, that third premolar can be very difficult to get up. And you also have the bone expansion that can cause uh, some difficulty in getting that, that attached gingiva off of that bone as well. So you see we're, we're making some progress there. We're going to go back. We're going to work a little bit more around that canine tooth. And the corners can be particularly difficult. So you want to make sure that you work slowly and deliberately on the corners. And then once you get a, a, a reasonable amount of mobility, like you see there, you can get a little bit more aggressive. You don't want to get aggressive early because then you have the potential to put too much pressure in one area and tear the gingiva because it's held tightly all around the instrument. But once you get some movement there, like you see here, we can come in with that large end of the periosteal elevator, the large end of that EX9, and utilize that to get more aggressive and work that unattached gingiva apically and resulting in a nice exposure. So we'll now use that periosteal elevator to help us retract that tissue while we use bone with a 701L burr. Now you see there that that vestibular bone is really friable so that burr has a tendency to just kind of drop down in there. It's very porous bone. It's not like the normal bone that covers the canine tooth. So you have to be very gentle so that you don't dig down into uh, the tooth too much. And it doesn't matter if you dig in some, you just don't want to go really deep with that. So now we're, we're creating a groove on both sides of that canine tooth. And you can see how easy that burr gets into that tissue just because of the expansion. That bone, again, is very porous. It's very weak. And uh, very quickly, we can create that outline and go directly to luxation in many cases here. So we'll start with the distal aspect there. You see we've already got really good mobility. Just come right in there and extract that whole tooth root very quickly and easily. Now we're going to take this through to completion of this entire procedure and consequently we'll show you how we suture. We haven't really done that in other videos, assuming that you're comfortable with that, but just for completion's sake in this maxillary canine extraction video on this kitty, we're going to show you uh, how we suture simple interrupted from the distal aspect working toward the mesial aspect. So right now what we're doing is we're using our diamond football burr to smooth that marginal bone. And we're also actually using that, you, you can see this in uh, the video on football technique in the quadrant extractions module, which is module number six. We'll show that in really good detail, how we smooth that mucosa and the bone uh, specifically for quadrant extractions in the cat, in the maxilla, but you can also use it here as well. So pay attention to that. 
Uh, there's much better detail in that one because we're, we're specifically concentrating on just that aspect, uh, which is a great adjunct to this video. So again, that's in the Quadrant Extractions section in Module 6, and it's the football technique for quadrant closure. So you can kind of see there we're getting up underneath that palatal mucosa with that football burr, just smoothing that out. And at the same time, we're creating a space so that we can pass that suture into the palatal mucosa from the vestibular mucosa. Doing the same thing here on the mesial side. We're not literally taking our periosteal elevator and going up under that tissue and creating a space for suture. We're just letting that burr do the work and it's very friendly and it will actually take and eliminate the fimbriated edge of that mucosa if it's inflamed without hurting the deeper healthy underlying mucosa on the palatal side. A very nice little technique that creates a lot of efficiency, reduces your, your time significantly. So you saw there we just did a surgical throw, two throws around and then tie, and then we'll do, just do two, two simple throws and, and tie that and we're, we're ready to move the rostral. Sutures are about two to four millimeters apart depending on the size of the patient. You don't have to get really uh, tight with these sutures this is not an area that has any tension on it. Uh, you've, you, when you have vestibular bone expansion, you actually have less tension because that tissue's expanded underneath that bone. It's also thickened, and so it's easier to suture. Sometimes you even have to excise some of that suture or excise some of that tissue with your scissors. So there we've made the, the second pass, and again, we move mesial to distal when we suture any oral surgery closure. And the reason for that is you're going to have, in most cases, especially if you're doing a vertical releasing incision, that incision's almost always, if not always, will be mesial. And so that allows for a lot of unattached gingiva at the end of suturing to give you a little bit more resiliency in the amount of tissue that you have left. So if we finish and we find that we need a little bit more tissue, all of that on that mesial releasing flap is unattached gingiva and can be pulled down to close the defect completely. We use 5 aught monocryl personally in our practice. We find that it moves very easily through the tissue. Uh, there's no tissue drag. Uh, it does hang on for about three weeks, which can be a little bit of a concern in cats with stomatitis where we don't want that suture remaining to cause inflammation. But I think the benefits of that and the, the speed at which we can do uh, these closures with the monocryl far exceeds any problems that we would see with retention of those knots in uh, causing minimal inflammation in those post stomatitis cases. In dogs we would use uh, forot monocryl. We use a PS2 or PS3 needle for the 5 aught, we use a P3 needle. So now we've, we've got the envelope portion of that flap closed. Now we're going to close the releasing portion. It's a little bit more difficult to visualize uh, just because that lips there and trying to retract the tissue. A little bit uh, harder to visualize with a video, but we'll show you the best we can here. One thing that you can do is use like I have with that little clamp that you can put on the lip which holds that tissue back while you suture. 
Uh, the other alternative is to have an assistant help you in this phase to help speed and facilitate closure as quickly as possible. So same, same thing here, simple interrupted. A common question is, do we have to refresh that edge before we close adjacent to the canine tooth? And the answer is no, unless it's inflamed. And if it's inflamed, what we generally do is incise that away at our initial incision. That way we've got a clean, either attached gingival margin, or in some cases we even go up into the unattached gingiva. And you'll see that specifically again in that quadrant section in module six where we'll demonstrate that. With the help of that retractor or with the help of an assistant or both, we'll place this last suture. Now watch this uh, carefully. This is a figure eight. So we just make one pass and then we come back apical to that and make another pass and then tie it. So that's a figure eight there. There's no tension there. It's all unattached gingiva. So we can do that little figure eight. It's much quicker, much more efficient than putting two simple interrupted uh, sutures there. Uh, same tie, surgeon's knot, and the two simple knots, and we're ready to go. So once that's tied, that completes the maxillary canine extraction in the cat and in this case we had a little variation with that vestibular bone expansion. And there's a final look.